Hey there, uh, so in this quick tutorial, we'll explore uh, creating dynamic images and uh, using Python and creating charts and sending them back to the user um, in an HTTP web service. Um, and for that, we would use an FCGI wrap, which is a project that uh, in, in, in implements FCGI scripts um, in a server. And we're, we're going to use uh, Nginx for uh, yeah, serving like Python requests to this FCGI uh, wrapped uh, service. Um, we're, we're not going to talk about that uh, all that stuff because this, uh, this um, Docker project here uh, repository takes care of everything for us, so we're, we're going to use that one here. So what I have is a local project here that I can just show you here. I've got a Docker compose.yml, so we're going to use Docker and Docker compose to um, uh, run our, like configure the services and everything. So just start from Docker compose. So uh, it's got like the web service here, which tags that image to the latest. Uh, the latest tag pulls fr from that. Um, uh, this step isn't really necessary there. And then, um, yeah, it basically, um, yeah, follows the instructions in, in, in the README, uh, which uh, points out to um, like, uh, uh, like overwriting the www folder. So that's where we can have our our charts and scripts um, for Python, and then some hook for installation, like installing scripts and and. Um, yeah, the requirements. So this is just a requirements which works, which is part of, the, of that in, installation for, for of dependencies. So um, all of this stuff shouldn't really matter, but I'll just go through it. So it basically um, like installs whatever you have in the requirements file, but it only does it once. So yeah, it does the version check in for for it, like checks and calculates the hash for that file, and uses it as, as the version. So um, yeah, that's not really important. So what's important is um, is this file here. This is where you're going to, are going to be um, placing your dependencies for Python for your Python project. Um, for now, we're just using Pillow. So it's using Pillow here. It, it doesn't specify a version, so it's going to be the latest. Well, I'm not sure if that's really the case. Yeah, so if you want to add more, you can just come here and, and paste more, more more dependencies that you want to be installed. Um, and they, they'll just be like, whenever you restart the container, it should uh, install them. And that happens only once, as, as we've discussed before. And here it, um, it points this uh, 9000, port 9000 to 80 inside the container. So our, our web service is going to be running inside, um, should it be, should it be uh, localhost? Yeah, I didn't start it yet, so it's, it, let's just leave that there. So, um, yeah, so I'll just hop on to the www folder, and then that's where I have the first example here. So it basically pull, uh, imports the image and image draw from Pillow. Um, yeah, that's the bare minimum. You're going to use the, the fonts and everything, so that that's up to you. Um, and some some other stuff where you didn't convert it, like reading the bytes uh, data from the image. And basically sending them back to the to to the user, like the request, um, by basically, um, yeah, sending a bi binary data, and then with, with the right content header, we're we're serving dealing PNG files here, so, um, we're sending that header, so um, it creates a blank image, um, that's uh, like that width and height, um, and then it draws an ellipsis rectangle and line. I, by the way, I just copied these sample codes from, um from this uh, tutorial here and it, it, it they did a great job with, it, with everything so to make things like a quick I'm just going to like run the um, yeah run the container our container here that we have in, inside the web service like the service here for the web so it's going to be dog compose up um, I'm not going to use the dash mode yet uh, because I want to see the output and just like cancel it quickly so as you can see, um, it installs the dependencies, um, which is like before I, I run it for the first time. So that's why you, you would do that. Um, it doesn't send any other outputs. So that that's that's when the services are running inside the um like the, the other like the parent um, repository like Docker image that we're using. So if I refresh here, um, it says for tree forbidden because we don't have a file for the index. Um, we're just having that one for um, example one, the py. So if I attach it here, it's just going to uh, render that that image, that like that dynamic image which is created here by drawing that ellipsis um, rectangle and that uh, yellow line. So um, yeah, one thing I want to point out here is I'm um, just gonna leave that there. 
So one thing I want to po point out is you, you, you would have to make these executable. So th th these have to be executable um, in order for them to be uh, like navigatable here in the browser. They did it through that did show up there and then like executed this actual script. So if I um, remove the executable rule from this one, it should it should probably stop running. So yeah, it's for for actually forbidden. So so anything that you want to be executed, like um, run by basically getting in that address there and in the file, um, just make sure you do uh, change mode plus X. That's what make, makes makes it executable. And then when you do another ls, you can see it's green now. So it's like um, executable. That's when the browser is actually going, like the, our FCGI web server is going to execute that for us. Um, and, and that's like a uh, like safe way to, um, I, would, I would think you'd have like other Python scripts here, like functions or function definition or stuff like that you, that you, want, you don't want to execute. Um, yeah, and uh, if I go back here, like basically this is the main um, entry point. We're, we're, we're doing that check and then basically we're doing that. But in, in a functions file, you wouldn't really have that stuff. So I'm not sure if it's, if it's that important, but yeah, just make sure uh, those are executable. So if I create another file, example to that py, um, saved it. So that's our example two. We're just going to copy this stuff over, and we're going to basically change a few things. Like try to get another example from this script here. Um, this article, sorry. So this one draws those um, shapes. Is going to copy, um, save it here. Everything is good. And if I go to um, example two, it's not going to run because we have to make it. We would have to make it executable. <laughs> Sorry. So change mode and then plus x example two dot py. And that's when that one is going to um, start loading again. Um, yeah, since we're, we're do dealing with CGI scripts here. And um, you can actually import, like execute, like do lots of things that HTTP can, like, like features of HTTP, like for example, um, read the query string, um, read the user forms in the user form. Like for that one, for example, CGI uh, request. Yeah, you could, uh, you could probably use something like there's a CGI module, uh, import CGI. Yeah, so something like this, import CGI, and then you get the field storage, and then that's where, where, where you get that, that one, for example. Um, yeah, I, I don't wanna go too, too, um, too deep into that, but you could just basically pull the, the, the query string from, from the browser, um, the, the URL, and then, yeah, something like this should, should definitely do the job. Yeah, um, so I guess that's all. And um, once you're done with it, with everything in your project is, uh, is good to go, you could probably just um, deploy it to your server. Um, here we could just, in, in a production setting, you could just use app minus D for the dash and Docker. Uh, the logs is, uh, are gonna be showing there. So now this is going to be running forever until like containers crash or something like the system reboots. Um, yeah, but um, if, if you if you want, you could also look into system search like reboot survival, or you could just start your containers from there. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit outside of the context of this tutorial, but um, uh, there is like how to um, make dynamic images and serve them to the users in in, in a browser. Yeah, so. That's about it, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, leave them in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.